Guess what everyone? Carvin's back. If you remember, Carbon Instruments was a manufacturer in California that made PA systems, guitar amplifiers, bass amplifiers, and at one point, guitars and basses before being separated off and going to the Kiesel lineup. But later, what happened was Carbon made an announcement that they are closing. Today, I'm doing a video to talk about the fact that um, Carbon Audio has made the announcement that after 70 years in business, they are going to close. Well, shortly after that, they made an announcement that they are back. Now, currently what they're doing is they're making two pedals, but these aren't just any pedals. And we're gonna be looking at one, and that is the X1. Now, if you're familiar with Carbon, you guys know that they made the X100B, which is a 100 watt amplifier, and it was a staple in the 80s for people like Frank Zappa, Steve Vai, uh, Warrant played them, I mean, just to name a few. I mean, there was tons of players. <laughs> The first thing you're going to notice is, is it's ginormous. I want to give you a reference for it because I found online that I had trouble understanding how big it was until it actually showed up. That is something I just want you to have in scale and concept of the size because I think it doesn't really kind of let you know how big it is. Nowhere on the pedal does it say where it's made. However, the box indicates that it's made in the USA. My first critique is the power supply. It came with a power supply and it was interesting because it comes with the adapters to use all the different outlets throughout all the countries in the world. But I don't understand the choice of using this one with a very short cable. So if I plug it into a wall, uh, it doesn't work. It's this only this far from the wall. You can see how troubling that is. Now, I thought maybe the logic would be that you would plug it into a power source on a pedal board, like a plug outlet. But again, if they gave me more cable, I would just uh, zip tie it up or, you know, kind of wind it up or something. So right now I'm running it straight out into the return of the effects loop of this Mark V mini head so that all I'm getting is the power section of the Mark V mini head and the reverb out of it into a cabinet. You're hearing solely the Carbon X1 preamp. And that's what this is. It's a preamp pedal. And that's important because this is really an answer to guys like me who maybe don't love or isn't in love with the idea of the Axe FX Kemper uh, system yet. Maybe I still like having a tube amp for some reason or just something that has more tactile function like knobs. This is a preamp pedal that I can take anywhere with me on the go. <laughs> I want to break it down simply just by using the buttons. I think that's an easy thing to figure out. A couple things I would suggest on this too is I wish instead of printing it on the uh, the black part of this housing or fascia that they actually could have put little maybe medallions or logos or, or silk screened it onto the white part. Just make it brighter. I really wish I could see this is the channel, this is the gain, this is the EQ, this is the loop. I found that as soon as I took it into, I took it to a jam with some friends, uh, the, the lights weren't very bright and I couldn't see it. I couldn't see and I couldn't remember. I didn't, I only had the pedal a day or two. So I could not figure out what I was stepping on. So let's talk about a couple things. First off, channel. What I like is that they use the LED backdrop behind the uh, EQ control. Uh, that's great. So blue is clean and red is dirty. How can you hate that? You can't. And what's great is that is your LED indicator for your two channels. So pretty straightforward. Red is on fire. Blue, you're cool. Another feature that's really cool on this is it has a uh, lead and rhythm, uh, which is a clean and dirty channel, a EQ function. It means you can add EQ to either one or both, and you do that by pushing in the button. And what's great is if you push in the button, it puts a, uh, a lighter blue center on this, so you can see it's a little brighter blue, and it kind of looks like water because there's two colors of blue. And if you go to the dirty side, you push it in, it looks like fire. It adds orange in the center, so it gets a oh, reddish orange. It looks like fire. I actually dig it. In fact, so much so, I, I want the EQ on just for the aesthetic. So let's get into that real quick. I'm gonna give you a sound sample of the, uh, the dirt channel. Now what I do is add that EQ. Oh, 
there is a very 80s sound coming out of this. If you're familiar with the old Carvin sound, this is it. They nailed it. This is this is really like if you always wanted a Carvin 100 uh, B, uh, but didn't want 100 watts, get this. This is exactly what you need. In fact, I know it's a good pedal. Here's why I know it's a good preamp pedal because I'm kind of a little disappointed they don't make an amplifier. <laughs> I want them to make a 15 to 25 watt amplifier. Now, we'll, we'll address that in a, in a little bit with the one watt feature on this. So there's your, there's your dirty. Let's go clean. Now, each channel has its own individual volume plus a master control. There's a bright switch. I'm super impressed with because the bright switch does very little and that's what I think a bright switch should do. I don't like bright switches when you you take me into like the shrill like just give me a little bit just give me a little bit of chirp top end chirp. Right? So it's great. Leave it off if you have a strat. But if you have an SG like this a little dark sounding. And one more time just do it without bright with bright. Perfect. I'm gonna leave it on now. But that's your two channels and of course you can add EQ to that. Your EQ control. What's great is if you turn them both on you can turn them off with your foot switch. So you just leave them on or off if you want. And why is that important? What happens if you don't want to use the EQ at all? on the clean channel, but you want to use it sometimes on the lead or as a boost. That way it won't affect your uh, clean channel, but on your dirty channel, you can turn it on and off. Very thought out. I mean, this is a really thought out product. I'm addicted to this harmonic thing that it does uh, where when I bend, I feel like almost like a high, an octave up. There's an octave up sound. Listen, watch. has a headphone jack if you want to use it for personal practice and if you want to run a line out for either recording or for live shows you have a line out that has a 412 and a 212 cabinet simulator uh, so that you can run that as well this is a cool feature if you want to use that this is a one watt tube preamp amplifier so it is an amplifier that runs a uh, one watt i have it running into the speaker cabinet so the same uh 12 inch speaker cabinet that i was running a minute ago which has a uh a cream back celestian in it uh, the neodymium one. And now, big difference in volume. Let's go ahead and turn this up. And I can't figure out what the buzzing issue is from, so you know. Um, I've tried everything when it comes to this. Let's go ahead and go to the clean. And same thing, let's go ahead. You can hear it a little bit here. And so I think it has to do with the power supply, maybe, maybe being close to the speaker uh, uh, cable. I'm not sure what that is. I haven't been able to correct the issue. I tried different speaker cables. I tried different cabinets. I've tried everything. You, no matter what, you get a little hum. So I'm just gonna let you know about that. I like that it has the one watt app. I don't think it's a huge part of the product's uh, feature set and the idea that I think they, they meant that to be a dominating factor. I don't think the Steve I version of this pedal uh, even has that feature. I just think they figured out, hey, this is a great way, like I said, that if you need something to practice with or if you need something to power something, you have that ability. So I can see where it's a cool feature, but uh, I don't think I would rely on it. Now, I will tell you this. If you're thinking about using that at night for a late night play, that's great. But I can tell you, as you can see, if you plug it into any of your, your other amps and use this preamp or even a uh, recording surface, I think you're going to get a much better result. The last feature I didn't show you was that there's actually an extra gain stage. So there's two stages of gain when it comes to the lead channel. So we go to lead channel. If you, that's not enough gain, step on that. Thank you. 
So there you have it, a very new and interesting product from a company that's been innovative for a long time. I play bass, as you guys know, and I use a bass preamp all the time when I play. I just take it with me. And it was really fun to go jam with some friends and take this. In fact, all I had to do uh, was ask them, hey, do you have any amps I can borrow there? And they were like, oh, of course. And I took this after I dialed in a sound at, a sound at home, and I really felt like uh, that was great. I really kind of regret not taking any footage of that. I thought it'd be fun, but I just didn't think to do it. But let me know what you guys think, and let me know if you think there's some cool products out there that are like this. Maybe I'm missing the boat on this. I like this so much. Is there other stuff that I haven't seen that's like this? This felt kind of unique to me. Before I go, I definitely want to thank the people at Carvin for sending this to me. It was really cool. Thank you for letting me share it with you guys, like I said, and uh, I'm really glad I stuck with it because I found a, a really cool, interesting piece of gear that I don't think I would have realized if I didn't spend a little more time with it. And hopefully that time I spent with it will help you guys if you're looking at this product. As always, I want to thank you so much for your time because I know it's valuable and you can spend it other places. And until next time, know your gear.